But yeah, so my name is Brennan Borgestad. I'm the business development manager with Skyla. Um, today I'm joined with Oliver Schneider. Um, Oliver, he's been, uh, had a lot of experiences with the KSK in Germany, as well as with NATO. And I know I'm not going to speak to his experiences because he's going to speak even better to it. But Oliver, thanks for joining us. And if you don't mind, just would love to get an introduction and uh, just kind of on your experiences and what all you've done in your life. Oh, uh, in the meantime, a lot because I'm pretty <laughs> old right now. Um, no, my, my first career was a military one. So I, I served as an as an officer within the German army. Uh, I was with the German power regiment um, and the um, uh, special forces, which is an equivalent um, to your SEALs, to your old style Delta Force, which you probably know with uh, Chuck Norris. So I was a Chuck Norris uh, in, in the past, German Chuck Norris in the past, uh, but it's a long time ago. So after that, after my military career, uh, I, I stepped out uh, as an as a captain. I stepped out and uh, uh, yeah, uh, joined uh, immediately the, the private security sector. So I was uh, within a blue chip company. Uh, I've been uh, within the um, corporate security department, worked then as a risk and crisis consultant uh, for a smaller uh, consultancy. And uh, since 2013, um, I have my own business uh, called Risk Workers. And um, yeah, and here I am. Awesome. Awesome. What, one question I have too, I know a lot of the security directors that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis have come either from military or police backgrounds into then the private security. What has that been like for you? I'm um, kind of in a different perspective. I know I'm working with a lot of the North American clients, um, but for you, what was that experience like? Yeah, the, my first experience was uh, really strange. Um, um, my first day within this uh, blue chip um, uh, company here in the in, in the center of Munich, it was really strange because it was uh, the first time for me that I went uh, to the canteen um, with ladies uh, because in that time the German military was only open for uh, male. And uh, so I really haven't had any contact to females for, for 15 years. And uh, so it was really, really uh, strange. And uh, I was sweating because I was totally unsecure uh, how to act. And uh, that was uh, quite, quite funny. Um, yeah, but in the end, um, uh, you still hear it, uh, I think, from my, my voice and uh, the mythology, uh, how you work and how you solve problems. This is something uh, which I took uh, from the military, uh, the leading process which I have in the military. Um, I have it now uh, established, fully established uh, to, to our company because this is, um, when it's uh, about a problem solving, a crisis solving, it's about uh, uh, a military style of uh, solving problems. And uh, it's not the attitude, but it's uh, the process, uh, which is uh, which which really helps, and uh, so I think uh, it it was not useless to spend some time in the military. Absolutely, absolutely, and and I know recently you published a book um, around just kind of your experiences and everything from saving hostages to other things like that. What kind of made you decide to write the book? And if you want to kind of give us a, a little bit of an intro to of what what all it's about. Uh, it, it was more or less a friend of mine who encouraged me to, to write a book because I was always talking about, you know, what I did uh, there and what I did then and what I did in the military. And um, uh, as you already mentioned, uh, we are in that um, hostage uh, negotiation business as well, uh, together with uh, partners and together with insurance companies. So um, uh, he said, this is pretty awesome. And um, uh, go out and write a book. Uh, I, I've never seen a book in, in the German market about uh, that kind of, uh, of topic. And I said, okay, so um, uh, I, I found a girl who's um, a professional in writing books. Um, so I asked her if she can support me. Uh, so I was telling her my stories and she made a, um, yeah, more or less um, uh, ad an adventure story out of that. So, um, so yeah, this uh, spring um, it was published and um, 
it's not the best seller ever, but uh, some some good um, uh, good numbers uh, have been sold in the in the past, and um, even China uh, is interested. And in 2023, so in two more years, uh, it will be published uh, on the Chinese market. Uh, my my publisher told me. Uh, awesome! Oh, that's yeah. great. So with all that experience from hostages to working in the military, things like that, any any similarities and then total differences that maybe people don't think about when it's like, okay, talking with the hostage negotiation to, hey, I'm talking to my board meeting or my sales meeting or things like that. Where where What similarities maybe do you see in both that people don't think about and it, what total difference is? It, it, in the end, it's about negotiations. So if you have a neck uh, with your girlfriend or with your wife, um, it's a negotiation. And um, so uh, there, there are similar similarities um, and um, you can really learn how to step into a negotiation when you do it with uh, kidnappers, with the really bad guys. And uh, right now, I told you yesterday that we are right now in the middle of um, um, cyber extortion cases. And uh, we are doing negoti negotiations with uh, the um, attackers, uh, with, the, with the hackers. And um, in the end, it's a negotiation. So it, it follows, um, um, let's say, uh, a, a very simple way uh, or always a, a similar way. And um, yeah, you have to define for yourself where you are within that negotiation. And then you can uh, put some pressure or take some pressure. Um, you can you can play around a little bit. So that's um, very often it's quite interesting, and uh, especially that cyber extortion uh, is it's getting more and more, and um, it's uh, it's different than uh, than negotiation uh, with a with a kidnapper. Absolutely. So in all those, I mean, yeah, whether it's kidnappers, cyber extortion, or my wife and I are having having a tip for things like that. What, what's maybe the one or two rules that like, okay, this is the, if I meet someone on an airplane, and I have a minute to talk with them. This is the one, one thing that's always true. And the one piece of advice around negotiation you'd give people. First of all, it's about uh, listening and uh, to understand uh, the objective of your counterpart. So um, it's 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 easy, uh, but um, um, you first you should listen, and then you should try to understand um, what is the real objective behind um, the first statement of your negotiation partner. And um, uh, if you do not have a clear picture of that objective, uh, it's hard to um, yeah to to have success because. The next go, going a, a different and probably the the wrong way. Absolutely, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. And so, also with your experience too. I mean, with the security side, I know you've seen a lot. I mean, yeah, like you mentioned, even too from hostages to now we're working in a bigger cyberspace and cyber field. What do you think are some some of the big things you're seeing in the global um, security space, and what do you think is needed to bring security to the next level? It's a hard question. Um, as you as you probably know, security is um, most of the time pain in the neck. Um, it costs money. You do not see any efforts. Nothing happens. So uh, why do we pay a security manager or why do we pay a security consultancy? Um, but if something happens, um, you have to be there immediately. Help us, and um, uh, you should have success. So um, this uh, the the span uh, where security professionals uh, are working in, and um, from my perspective, I think um, as I mentioned, cyber extortion is one issue which could raise the awareness in the business environment um, uh, towards security measures, because it can happen everywhere. It can happen to anyone, uh, small company, big company. Um, it's, um, it could be critical for your business survival um, because if you do not act uh, adequately, it could cost um, the company. 
Um, it could cost a lot of um, reputation, money. So I think that's a good point uh, to raise awareness towards security, towards a professional risk management and towards a professional crisis management. Absolutely, absolutely. And so I know too, just to kind of give people who don't know as well. So you're, you're actually on our Skyla um, board of directors and on our advisory board um, and a member at, with Skyla too. Would love to kind of hear what made you join Skyla um, in what parts, I mean, kind of in that, in that topic and spirit of security, where you see Skyla being a fit um, and what yeah made you join. That was a funny story as well, because it was a small meeting we had in, in Munich uh, two years ago. Uh, Albert, uh, the CEO of uh, Skiller, was, um, uh, was there and uh, we, we started to chat. And he said, yeah, he was uh, serving in the military as well. I said, yeah, very similar to me. And then he said, yeah, he was in that blue chip company uh, here in, in, in Munich as well. I said, yeah, I, 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 I was with them as well. So we had some... You know, um, um, uh, same same background, and same history, but he's the smart techie guy, and I'm the uh, dumb uh, guy. You know, knocking doors, um, so um, or hitting doors. And uh, but uh, he said, "Yeah, um, may I introduce you to to Skilla and uh, technology?" And to be honest, um, I'm still happy um, if uh, I can handle my my PC, my computer, I'm, a, I'm not a nerd, I'm not a tech guy. Uh, so um, uh, he, he uh, explained me what is um, uh, AI and what is he doing with his company. And I said, eh, that's really, really interesting. And um, so we, we started that, um, yeah, um, that collaboration. And uh, he asked me if I would like to join because uh, he thought um, I'm an authentic guy with an authentic security background. And this was uh, the starting point of uh, joining Skilla. And uh, I see right now uh, how you guys uh, are, are growing and um, how many clients uh, Skilla has worldwide right now. And um, Germany is one of the uh, toughest markets, uh, I would say, uh, to bring in new technology because Germans are hard to convince if uh, there's something new, especially when it's about data and um, you know, uh, all that, uh, all that uh, data protection laws we have in place. Um, that's quite hard to convince Germans. But um, I think we are in a good way. And uh, last week, especially last week, we had a very good and successful meeting with one of the biggest uh, camera providers and uh, uh, primer, um, camera uh, producers here in Germany. And uh, they are keen on a co of, a, of a collaboration. So we are moving forward, slow, but steady. And uh, that is, um, yeah, that is uh, the, the, the background of um, how I met uh, Skula and, and Albert. That's awesome. One of the things that we talk about with Skyla too is just around proactive security and creating proactive solutions. Where, I mean, with maybe you can speak to Skyla and what you've seen, but also too, in your background, what, is, what does proactive security mean to you uh, and how important is it in moving forward into the next steps in the future of security? Um, we have um, a, a concrete um, uh, project here right now in Germany uh, where uh, a police department is asking for a solution um, which is not in place right now. Uh, it's the detection of non-moving objects. So how to detect a non-moving object and give the right alarm in the right manner, um, uh, in the right time span um, and uh, without raising um, uh, false negative alarms. So um, that is very uh, a very concrete uh, requirement coming from a police department because they want to cover one of their or many of their elevators within the uh, police headquarters. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I think AI, only AI can solve that kind of problems in the future. Detection of objects, moving objects, specific objects like, like weapons, um, 
face recognition we you you guys or we guys have it already in place but it's very hard to sell in germany because of data protection laws and um and other stuff so i think um it's just the beginning and not the end um of a development um where ai can really um improve security due to reducing false alarms uh, due to um identification uh, early date uh, identification of um, of um, things or actions and um, yeah I, so i'm totally convinced that this is uh, the future and um, um, skiller is on the right way absolutely and in your experience too like in the private security what are, i know we've kind of on our website we have different industries and things that we're going after or i'm going after on a certain day of um, kind of working on the sales side, but where where have you seen a fit maybe unique to Germany or just even worldwide with your experience that really is a benefit kind of, like you said, being in that private sector space, what what industries and areas um, do you see a lot of this kind of proactive turn really being a resource in, in your experience? Almost everywhere. So I see it in the retail, uh, uh, retail market um, uh, as theft protection probably. I see it in the logistics um, for uh, because you're moving goods from A to B all the time. Um, uh, I see it in uh, the automotive uh, industry. Uh, you know, the uh, autonomous uh, driving issue is, is definitely an issue. Um, I see it in the perimeter protection uh, together with uh, uh, huge uh, camera um, producers. So um, I I would say there's almost uh, no limit. Wherever you have right now regular and almost analog video camera systems installed, why should this camera not have um, any AI benefit um, uh, installed as well? So if it's around public places, you know, airports, um, um, train stations, so I, I see a almost non-limited um, uh, possibilities to use AI uh, within uh, the, the camera industry. And um, I, I know the US, I know um, um, the UK, you have much more cameras uh, in, in, the, uh, in the public uh, space there than in Germany. Um, but um, yeah, uh, cameras are, are everywhere and everywhere where there's a camera, there should be AI in it. And um, um, of course, uh, Skula AI should be in there. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So one of the other things too, I know we'd mentioned and we had to reschedule some stuff. You were actually involved with a lot of the stuff with the evacs in um, Cabal and things like that. Mm -hmm. One would love to just hear about your experience, what's going on there, any updates on that side as well as two, um, where you think kind of technology and conversations like this proactive security um, conversation that we're having at Skylight like, could be a benefit to two things like the uh, situation that we're seeing um, there as well. I, I think um, it, not so much probably in um, um, uh, uh, within that situation, but if a situation occurs around a perimeter where Skula technology is already in there, then you have mm -hmm. a benefit. So uh, perimeter protection of an airport, uh, it, it, that would be extremely helpful if um, a perimeter protection cameras would be installed with the AI, uh, Skula AI technology in Kabul to detect uh, weapons, uh, who's, uh, who's going there, who's leaving the airport with weapons, going to the airport with weapons within the city. So uh, it, it's, it's really a kind of an, or it could be, a kind of an early warning system uh, to those who protect uh, perimeter and people. And um, um, uh, it, it, it's hard to bring in Skula when, when something occurs. Skula and the technology should be there already. And then you're able probably to rec react faster, get more reliable information earlier. And that would be uh, the benefit um, uh, even in crisis situation. Absolutely. It's that proactive. How can we proactively get the solution there to then do proactive things on top of it, too? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So one other question, too, kind of jumping back to the hostage negotiation. 
Oliver, is there any story or kind of thing that comes to mind of kind of the craziest or just most interesting negotiation stories that you've had um, or kind of been a part of in, in your time as well? And obviously that, that you can share too, because obviously I understand yeah, some of them might be private yeah, yeah, without saying were, names. There were some, some funny stories. Um, we had a negotiation some years ago where the negotiator on the other side uh, called us again after the negotiation and after the kidnap case was solved and he was calling us and said, hey, how did I um, manage that? I was, yeah, pretty good, was, was good. Um, do you have a job for me? Uh, because uh, I could work for you guys as well. So um, uh, that negotiator from the bad guys was offering his services to us uh, for the future. And um, uh, that was um, something, um, yeah, weird and, um, and, and funny. And um, so, but uh, stories like that uh, almost uh, happen in, in, in every case. Wow. So that's, so you're saying even the hostage negotiations themselves are interviews apparently and, and LinkedIn connections. It's almost equivalent they, where he's like, Hey, they, I made a great connection with this guy. They see, uh, they see themselves as uh, professional negotiators. And uh, so um, that is uh, their profession and they offer it um, to the good guys and the bad guys. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> That's nuts. Well, no, Oliver, I really appreciate you taking the time. I mean, I really appreciate all you're doing with Skyla um, and bringing just our global solution to um, Germany and to other conversations that you're able to get us into around the world. Um, any any other notes too, just kind of finally to wrap up that where you see just technology going? I know you kind of hit on it too on AI. Anything that you see kind of the future of, te of technology and security or things that are important for security directors that we're meeting with to say, hey, this is important to be be noticing and making sure we're taken care of or any any notes on that? But not really, because you guys, you cover really uh, the, the whole market and the developments uh, out there in the market. Uh, one big issue, I think, is uh, the um, autonomous uh, driving um, where that technology can be used as well besides security. So uh, I, I think that that should be probably or could be one approach to Skilla as well, um, not to focus only into the security market and the security systems, but trying to broaden the view a little bit out of it. Awesome. That might be because I'm German uh, and uh, Germans is, uh, Germany is about Autobahn and, and BMW and Mercedes. And this is probably my, my point of view. Uh, it might be totally different when you're talking to um, a guy in South Africa. But um, as a German, this is my point of view towards uh, that technology and where it can, can go in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, for sure. And definitely a huge emphasis on a lot of the big names. My wife, yeah, she she loves her Mercedes at the same time and, and all this crazy stuff. It's funny when you bring it in, it's like, okay, it's not even talking about cars. We're talking about computers when we bring it into the shop now, just because there's so many technology changes and things that are coming up yeah. as well. Yeah. One other note too, where, where can people get your book? I know you mentioned it, it's going to be coming to um, like China here soon. Where can they get it? Is it in German right now only? I know China's it's coming. Only, Is it English? It's only in, in, in German right now. And uh, as I mentioned, in, uh, in two years in, in Chinese. Um, but if there's somebody out there speaking German, you can order it uh, via the Amazon uh, website, of course, and um, put Oliver Schneider in, into it. And uh, then you um, uh, will find it. Uh, the, the name in German is Der Wille Entscheidet. Uh, the will is decisive. Um, uh, that's uh, the motto of the German uh, Special Forces, and uh, so that's uh, the title of my my book. And uh, if there's somebody out there speaking German, go for it. Awesome. And so China's next, and then English is that the next kind? Like what? Is and that next Korean and Japanese. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. We'll get the release order solidified, yeah, yeah. and then yeah, we'll, we'll get that all set up. So perfect well oliver i really appreciate you taking the time i appreciate your partnership with skyla um, and our partnership um, with what you're doing around the world and really appreciate you taking the time to, to speak with me and uh, be a part of skyla with us thank you Pran. it was a it was a, a real pleasure thank you absolutely thank you oliver thanks everybody bye bye, -bye.